Hello friends, in this video, let us discuss about stabilization by tertiary winding. So in our last video, that is in three winding transformer, we have discussed the several uses of having tertiary winding in a transformer and of those several uses or you can say advantages of having tertiary winding, uh, that is one important advantage is that uh, in a star star connected transformer, your tertiary winding allows for sufficient earth fault current to flow for the operation of protective equipment to suppress the harmonic voltage. So it allows for sufficient earth fault current to flow for the operation of protective equipment to, sup uh, to suppress your harmonic voltages and to limit the voltage unbalancing when the main load is unsymmetrical. So when the main load is unsymmetrical, your protective equipment helps to suppress the harmonic voltages as well as limits the voltage unbalancing. Now, if I talk about the star star connected transformer which is comprising of three single phase units or it may be a three phase shell unit or it may be a filing core type transformer, filing core type transformer, these transformers have two drawbacks when they operated unbalanced load. So, one drawback is that they cannot readily supply a unbalanced load between the line and neutral. That they cannot readily supply a unbalanced load between line and neutral. And the second drawback is their phase EMFs may get distorted due to the harmonic EMFs. Now, these two drawbacks, if you understand the reason for these two drawbacks, the reason is due to the magnetic flux set up in the iron core due to the harmonic currents as well as the zero sequence currents will have an iron path. So the magnetic flux will have an iron path and uh, this iron path will have a low reluctance, low reluctance and when we say low reluctance there will be high impedance. So we shall establish how what is the relation between the reluctance and the impedance later on. So when this iron path, uh, the magnetic flux will have an iron path which is low reluctance which offers a high impedance. So there will be high impedance for the zero sequence current to flow. So that means the zero sequence impedance is very high and it will be uh, around some 0 0.5 per unit. Now when this zero sequence impedance is very high, your earth fault current may be insufficient to uh, energize your or to operate your predictive equipment such that when you do not operate your predictive equipment in the case when the load is unsymmetrical you may not able to suppress your harmonic voltages as well as to limit the voltage to limit the voltage unbalancing so that means you have to overcome this zero sequence impedance so before that if I establish the relation between the low reluctance that is the reluctance and the impedance. So consider any transformer having n turns. So I am considering a transformer having n turns and uh, let us say the transformer has a magnetic path of RL reluctance. So we know that the MMF, MMF will be given by n into i, the number of turns i is the current. Uh, this will be equal to phi into RL. So this is the relation we can establish and uh, we know that the induced voltage that is the induced voltage V is equal to 4.44 phi F into N and uh, from here from this equation we can write phi is proportional to V or you can say phi is equal to KV. But now let me plug this phi is equal to KV here. So when you plug phi is equal to KV here you will have NI will be equal to KV RL and from here your V upon I will be equal to N upon KRL. This V upon I is nothing but Z. So your Z is inversely proportional to RL. So when you have low reluctance, that means you will have high impedance. So this is the relation you have to remember definitely. So whenever you say low reluctance, this reluctance is nothing but when you compare in the electric circuit, this is resistance and uh, this phi which is magnetic flux when you compare 
uh, in the electrical circuit this is current and this mf mmf is nothing but the voltage so when you write voltage is equal to i into r this v corresponds to mmf this i corresponds to flux and this resistance corresponds to rl so but the reluctance of the when you have low reluctance that means you have high impedance so therefore the zero sequence current will have high impedance in their path so that you cannot operate your relative equipments so if i talk about the voltage unbalancing so let me say i am having a, a star connected transformer like this so this is uh, one side of the trans there is a primary winding and uh, for the secondary winding let me say these are the three windings and uh, here what i do is i am connecting a load so there is a load connected here and this will be the neutral this is your load 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 and here if i say this is your phase a this is phase b and phase c and here you can see the output load current will flow in only one phase your output load current if i say i it will flow in only one phase but whereas your input load current let me say this is some i1 so your input load current will flow in two phases in absence of neutral so there will be no neutral here in the star connected transformer we are taking there is a isolated neutral or you can say in the absence of primary neutral the input load current must flow through these two phases b and c now owing to the absence of the secondary current of these two phases these two phases will offer high reactance path so when when there will be uh, secondary currents corresponding to these two phases this secondary current will set up a demagnetizing flux so that the flux can be reduced here but owing to the absence of secondary currents the flux will be more and when the flux will be more the reactance offered by these two paths will also be more so there will be high reactance offered by your b and c phases and as it offers high reactance the voltage in these phases will become very high and uh, it will become uh, something uh, approximately to the primary line voltage so it will become something approximately to the primary line voltage and the voltage in the phase a reduces to a very low value so your voltage in a reduces to a very low value and this creates a very serious voltage unbalance in the circuit so basically this should have the volt these are the phase phases so phase phase will have voltage v by root 3 but the react due to the presence of the reactance high reactance the the voltage of these phases may reach up to the primary line voltage that is v so this is how we get the voltage unbalancing in the circuit now before talking about this uh, if i talk about the three phase system so in a three phase system you will come across the positive sequence voltages negative sequence that is a positive sequence negative sequence and zero sequence voltage and currents so due to the unbalance in the secondary uh, side so due to the unbalance in the secondary side or due to the unbalanced load so any unbalanced current in the three phase system will have three sets of components so one is the positive sequence component negative sequence component and other one is the zero sequence components and uh, for the static devices like uh, your transformer transmission lines cables the impedance of those static devices do not they, or you can say that does not depend on the sequence uh, of the voltage is being fed so whether you feed them positive sequence or negative sequence the impedance of those devices does not get affected so the transformer is a static device and uh, whether you feed a positive sequence voltage or a negative sequence voltage the impedance does not get affected because the operation of this static apparatus does not depend on the does not depend on whether you feed them a positive voltage or a that is a positive sequence voltage or a negative sequence voltage so remember this but if i say uh, your positive sequence uh, and negative sequence and zero sequence uh, their phase diagram so they will have a 120 degrees they will have a 120 degrees phase in between them and this 
will be equal in magnitude. So let me say this is A, this is B and this is C and for the negative sequence you reverse the two any two phases. So if I reverse this phase this will be B and this will be C. So this will be a negative sequence. Uh, they, they will form a balance set balance set where this the order of this phase is A, B, C and the order of this phase is A, C, B and your zero sequence currents will be symmetrical to each other. They will be symmetrical and the phase between them will be zero. They are cophasial currents. So as the static devices uh, does not depend on whether you feed positive voltage or the negative voltage, let us get more concerned about this zero sequence currents. So the zero sequence current the zero sequence current there will be whenever there will be unbalanced in the load set there will be a zero sequence current so if i draw the equivalent of this star star connected transformer with the tertiary winding in between so let me say there is a uh, tertiary winding here so if i draw their equivalent so first i will be having uh, this is my primary winding and uh, from here I am having the secondary winding. This is your secondary winding and uh, this is your tertiary winding. Now there will be zero sequence component or there is a zero sequence current in this winding. Now when there is zero sequence current in this winding but there won't be this zero sequence current due to the presence of zero sequence current there will be mmf and this mmf must be balanced by the other winding but as the primary winding is having a isolated neutral you cannot see the zero zero sequence current flowing through this winding and therefore the mmf will remain unbalanced so the mmf of this secondary winding will remain unbalanced by the primary current and here the role of the tertiary winding comes into the picture so what your tertiary winding does is it takes the zero sequence current flowing from this secondary winding in it permits the flow of zero sequence current through it so your tertiary winding allows the flow of zero sequence current through it and this zero sequence current will establish a MMF. Now the MMF established in the tertiary winding will balance the MMF created by the zero sequence current in the secondary winding. But in the primary winding as we have seen the star connected primary is having an isolated neutral and due to the isolated neutral we cannot witness any zero sequence current in the primary winding and due to the absence of zero sequence current this MMF remains unbalanced in the absence of tertiary winding. So let us assume that you are not having any tertiary winding and uh, there will be a MMF created in the secondary winding due to the presence of zero sequence current and this MMF will remain unbalanced because there will be no zero sequence current in the primary winding because of the isolated neutral and uh, as it is offering a high impedance to the flow of zero sequence current and this impedance is nothing but uh, your uh, open circuit impedance or you can say the exciting impedance. So there will be open circuit path because of the high impedance and low reluctance path and uh, you can see this tertiary winding is allowing the zero sequence current to flow through it so that it will establish the MMF to balance the MMF created in the secondary. So normally if I make you clear the concept is we are having a star connected primary trans primary this is star connected primary and uh, let me say I do not have any tertiary now and I am having a other star connected secondary but for this star connected secondary there is a neutral which is grounded which is grounded so the current the zero sequence current will be equal to i naught will be equal to 1 by 3 into i a plus i b plus i c so here you will see your currents so let me say this is i a this is i b and this is i c and this is 3 i naught so your 3 I0 will be equal to IA plus IB plus IC. Now due to the unbalance in the load there will be 
a zero sequence current because we have said that any unbalanced current in the three phase system can have three sequence there is a three sequence components positive negative and zero sequence and positive sequence and negative sequence the impedance does not get affected as it is a static apparatus and uh, now dealing with the zero sequence current there will be a zero sequence current will be established and this zero sequence current have its own flux and uh, now as this star connected primary is having a isolated neutral there won't be zero sequence current flowing through that to balance the mmf established by the secondary winding so what we are doing is we are using a tertiary winding so this tertiary winding allows your zero sequence current to circulate in the closed delta and the, you should ensure that the reactance should be large enough to limit the circulating currents and also you have to ensure the heating capacity of this react uh, heating capacity of the reactance of this windings so normally if this star connected secondary with a neutral will have a zero sequence current it is establishing mmf and this mmf must be balanced by the primary but due to the isolated neutral of the star connected primary this mmf does not get balanced and here your tertiary winding comes into the main picture to allow that circulating current to flow in that closed delta so for this connection this will be your circle uh, this will be your equivalent circuit so in the equivalent circuit as there will be no zero sequence current flowing in this primary winding i have represented it with the open winding and uh, as your tertiary winding is allowing the circulating current to flow through it i have drawn like this this will be your secondary winding so this is and before that one thing i have to say you that in a five limb core we have discussed three phase shell and in a three single phase shell now it may not be necessary to employ this tertiary winding in the three limb core type three limb core type because the flux will the flux established in the three limb core can be reduced to some extent by forcing the magnetic flux out of the limbs to the high reluctance air so that there will be less flux and when you have less flux there will be less zero sequence impedance so that you can overcome your voltage unbalancing but however in a star star connected transformer it is usual to employ the tertiary winding in the three limb core type also three limb core type also so i hope you got a clear picture how we are going to stabilize the system by using the tertiary winding so please subscribe to the channel thank you